Welcome to Hudson Gymnasium for tonight's NICL girl boy doubleheader as the Dyke New Hartford Wolverines come to town to take on your hometown Hudson Pirates. In our first matchup, it will be the girls game of the undefeated and number two ranked Dyke New Hartford Wolverines in Class 2A taking on your Hudson Pirates. Chad Christopher along with Steve Baird and Chad, I'll just let you take over and talk uh, preview this matchup for us. Right, so obviously uh, uh, for DNH, you've got the number two team in the state in Class 2A undefeated, having another strong year underneath uh, Bruce Dahl. Yeah, 13-0, 11-0 in the conference, has a two-game lead in the conference standings, and so uh, um, they're looking to just run, run, that, run that streak to undefeated tonight against Hudson and you know they beat us pretty pretty handily over there 59-19 back in December so um, obviously um, really strong program went to state the last several couple of years and uh, they had kids that uh, went play college basketball and they just keep rolling along um, with that too so some of the some of the things that uh, you'll notice about uh, DNH is they're very aggressive um, on the defensive end, they kind of run an, an extended out 2-3 zone. They'll run some sort of diamond press. Sometimes it's aggressive, sometimes it's a little bit off. Um, they do like to play a little bit more inside out. They got some, uh, some of those volleyball girls on the inside, <laughs> and so they'll throw it into them. Um, um, so, you know, that's uh, very good, very solid. They're just going to make you um, the one thing that I watched a couple of their games here. Um, this week, they just make it really hard for you to score. You know, they made it hard for us to score over there. Everybody's, you know, they're, they're only giving up. They're giving up 25 game, 25 points a game, and that's leads the state in class two A. I talked so, to Coach Curley earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So it's they just make it really difficult for you to score. So you know, for for Hudson to really have a strong opportunity tonight, we're going to have to keep it low, lower score. We're needing to keep them into that you know, below 40 range, and, and hopefully we can uh, we can have a strong night. So um, they average over 20 steals a game, so you that you know that just jumps out to you in terms of being really aggressive on the defensive end, and that turns into easy offense. So we're going to have to make them work, hopefully get back set in our defense, don't let them get some easy shots, uh, make them shoot it from the outside. You know, they shoot a, a pretty high percentage you know, field goal percentage, and that's because they shoot from the inside. And so you got to really kind of kind of force them to go ahead and do that. Um, so those would be, you know, low turnovers. we got to compete inside. Obviously, Macy's going to have to have a, a good game and not get in foul trouble. You know, that would be that would be important to force some outside shots. And, and when you get a good, clean look, because they are so aggressive, they're going to do some gambling, and you're going to get, you know, you know, maybe a Madison or a Sarah, Jess is going to have some good looks from the outside. We got to hit them. Got to hit them um, when we get that opportunity um, with that too. So, yeah, I know Coach. You know, we've had him up a couple times, and he's talked a lot about turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. And this is this is a turnover type of game. So if we can keep them keep them low, and then we've we've always talked about the the live ball turnovers as opposed to, you know, hey, you traveled or you got a three second violation or something like that. You know, if they leave, if they if they get 20 steals a game, they're going out, they're, they're getting those steals and they're gonna go shoot layups and we gotta make sure that that doesn't happen, that they they have to set their offense every every single time here. So um, I know the girls, um, you know, this is third game of the week. Uh, had a tough one over at Jessup on, on Monday night. Had an opportunity with that one. And again on Tuesday night over at AP. So yeah, two we're hard really, breakers. really, I mean, second time through, we've been really close with those games. You just feel like, hey, here's here's a great opportunity um, for the girls to step up. And at home, we got it. Hey, it looks like we got another good-sized crowd here for us tonight. And uh, um, should be exciting opportunity for them and uh, so you know if we want to right now we're sitting in kind of seventh place in the uh, in the conference if you want to if we want to jump up there there's an opportunity for us to jump up to the third to fourth place we're going to need a, a game like this again against 
you know, one of the top teams in order for that to happen. So. One thing that Co uh, Coach Curley talked about, I got a chance to visit with him, is that he, he kind of hinted that he has a sneaking suspicion that we might see the, the, the uh, dike somewhere in the tournament. And so um, we're not, we're not going to see any junk. <laughs> he said, he, he said right. this is not the night, right. to, night to throw anything out there. So you're going to probably see the traditional um, Hudson uh, lineup. So for our starting lineups tonight for the DNH Wolverines, they will start a sophomore, number 13, Ellery Knock. Uh, number 21, a junior, Taylor Cavalli. Uh, number 23, Paula Gonzalez is a senior. Number 25, Peyton Peterson is a freshman and a junior, Sophia Hoffman, and wears number 33 for head coach Bruce Dahl, Matt Dove, Amber Geringer, and Ashley Benega are his assistant coaches. They will be wearing the blue uniforms with the white numbers and lettering for your hometown Hudson Pirates wearing their white uniforms with the blue trim. It will be Madison Michael, a junior, number 14. Number 23, Jessica Carlin, a senior. Senior, Sarah Hansen wears number 24. Junior, Ella Engel wears number 30. And number 42, Macy McKenna is a sophomore for head coach. Jeff Curley, an assistant coach, is Emily Cook. So we will turn the sound down, and we will honor tonight the nation tonight with the playing of our national anthem and be back with play-by-play -play action right after this. Welcome back for girls NICL basketball. Dyke New Hartford Wolverines taking on the Hudson Pirates in an NICL tilt. Yeah, Dyke is uh, DNH has uh, won 18 of the last 19 matchups. It's been a, it's been a while since uh, the Pirates have had an opportunity to beat to beat the Wolverines. Um, other action around the conference tonight. Jessup second place is at AP. They're in third place. Denver is at Union. Columbus is at Wapsie, and Sumner Fred is off tonight. They beat so South Wind last night, so that will be the lineup for tonight. And McKenna jumps it up, and it's won by the Wolverines, and here they come with Hoffman. Swings it in the corner to knock. Up top, three ball, Peterson up good. Yep, just got a good clean look there. We kind of slacked off the little bit. Good ball movement by the Wolverines and created an easy... Easy opportunity. And a steal by Hoffman over to Cavalli. Layup good. 5 nothing. Yep, just not taking care of the ball, making good decisions. You, you knew we were going to come that. That's, it's hard to simulate, especially their length in practice because um, they really do have that athleticism in terms of their length, and it uh, causes a lot of teams' problems. Looks like a little zone kicked away and stolen away. Here comes Knock, quicks it up quickly to Cavalli, swings it, top of the key three ball, short, and that will go out of bounds and it'll belong to the Pirates. Yeah, you can see when they, they're going to look to push it, and then once they get set, they're really crisp with their ball movement around the Pirate zone. So 
Hudson's going to have to get good hands and make them up. Oh, there's a bad pass there. Hoffman layup bumped, but he, she still holds on to it. It's good 7 nothing. Wolverines, a minute and five seconds left of the game, and Coach Curley wants a timeout right away. The thing that he did not want to happen. Turnovers and live ball turnovers leading to quick buckets. Yeah, yeah. I mean, d I mean, that quickly, you know, a minute into the game, you're down seven to nothing, and that's not what you worked on in practice or anything like that, too. It's just making good decisions, and, you know, they're so aggressive. They have such quick hands um, that it really causes, uh, you know, this is this is by far the best pressure you've seen, and they're not even full. I mean, they're kind of a what I call a soft diamond press. They kind of lay off, let you inbound it, and then they attack. That three ball was by Gonzalez, by the way. I got her, her and Peterson look pretty close, similar in size and numbers and hair. <laughs> There's Hanson trying to break the ice. Can't. McKenna tips it away, and it's saved inbounds by the Wolverines, and they quickly come out with it. Skip it up to Hoffman here, bringing it up the right side. Yeah, good good ball movement to get a shot off there. Cawley's three is left off the iron and no good. And, and Michael rebounds. And they trap right away, coming off the defensive rebound. Hudson beats the press into the front court to Hanson. Yeah, it's just never stopping. You know, even after a miss, a lot of times coaches want their team to hustle back and they go pressure the ball. Michael, no. Hanson offensive rebound. Yeah, that's the, that's a look we're going to probably get several times tonight. Get the ball to Jess at the high post because they really extend up high and then hit the wing, and Madison's going to have that shot a few times. McKenna gets it blocked away by Gonzalez, or by Peterson that time, sorry, and here comes Kowali. Good, good. Macy's just going to have to just elevate a little bit higher to get that shot oh, off. Oh, good find in the bucket by Gonzalez, and it's 9-0. Skipped over the top there. Michael with the ball. Skips it across. Ooh, that's dangerous there. Hanson. Nice, nice play. pass yep. to Carlin. Lamp good. And that will be important to have those ball fakes because they're gonna they're gonna jump. They're gonna try to overplay some different things. So if you can have some ball fakes, then you can maybe find some holes because they are kind of spread out. They are spread out on their on their zone. So there are some gaps in there. You just gotta find them. Knock in the lane, leaves it short. Michael comes up with the rebound and immediately double teamed, and that's going to be a foul on the Wolverines. It'll be our first foul of the night. I think this one's going to go on Peterson, and it does. It's her first team's first. Good good rebound, good position by Madison. You're going to have to be strong with the ball when you get those opportunities because they're going to be in there trying to reach and, and grab and try to steal it from you. So you'd have to strong hands, and uh, that time in the weight room is going to be showed up there a little bit. Turnover, Engel trying to get it ahead to Hanson. Ball out of bounds to the Wolverines. Been about a week and a half since we had a live broadcast here. The the Pirate Boys basketball team got a win on the road. Yeah. Since the last time we talked last night, the wrestling team split at to North Tama, won against North Tama and lost to Denver. Right. And it'll be another week and a half before we're back here. Yeah. So I was looking at the schedule. Not until yeah, not until next a week from Monday. So yeah. so and then then we got a we got a little bit of time that we get to keep her going. Gonzalez with another three or second of the night's 12-2. And, and the one thing you'll note about DNH too is they're very balanced. They're just not one specifically. Nice press break. That's the way you want to do that. Nice move there by Macy to take it and not be, not hesitate. Just take it straight up and uh, shoot the. Ooh, nice block too. Blocked away by McKenna. 12-4. Halfway through the first. Hanson to Michael. Carlin gets it, drives it, swing. Hanson from 15 gets it blocked. Here come the Wolverines. Good ball Gonzalez. movement by Hudson. Just got uh, their size just kind of negated uh, any kind of movement with that. Peterson with her first two of the night, and it's 14-4. McKenna at the block, turns, faces, gets it poked away. Stolen, Hoffman with it. Here come the Wolverines. Again, those aggressive hands. Oh, nice find. Oh, Travel ooh. first. Ooh. I don't know if I saw that, but. I'm Checking just, into the lineup is Lampfire. Replaces Kowali. The last couple times Hudson's done now they've run they're running the one four here against that press breaker, and it, they've been a little bit more comfortable of finding and not turning it over against the press. Michael from 15, stop pop, nothing. Carlin saves it, oh. but it hit the out-of-bounds line and it'll be Wolverine ball. Good hustle. Good hustle. 
I don't really – I talk I, like I said, I talked to Coach Curley. Um, he's not going to be too disappointed with uh, shots that may not necessarily be quality shots. Right. He wants to get them up there. Right. Um, so – I mean, even though that was kind of a force by Madison, she no, got it she up needs there. to. Yeah, and anytime you get a, 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 an ounce of space, and when you can get a shot off, you got to take it. You got to take it because you're not going to get because of the, the way they close out their size. Um, you know, they're going to really smother you, and so if you get an, an open shot, whether you think it's the your traditionally really good shot or not, yeah, you need to take it. The foul was on Gonzalez, her first and the team's second. Uh, Pirates. Trying to cut into this 10-point deficit. Into the corner, Salih into the game. And kicks it up top. And good come to the basketball by Sarah. And the foul's on Lampar. Yeah, because those long passes and those skip passes, normally that's uh, that's something that you can do probably against any other team in the conference. But against DNH, you can't just because they're so their length and their anticipation on the wings is so good that uh, anything like that, they're going to be kind of – since that ball's coming and they're gonna make a, a make a run for it. Stolen away by Knock. Into the lineup is the twin sister Jaden Peterson. And there's a foul, a first foul on Sarah Hansen will be the first on for the Pirates tonight. Yep, just trying to keep keep her in front of her and just kind of got a little bit on the reaching side. And official noted that and made the made the call there. Got a couple subs. Engel McKenna back in. Hansen and Michael out. Take a breather here with 2.55 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, Hutch, Skipped all the way across. Hudson's trying to move from 2-3 to 1-3-1, one, one, trying to find something that works. But this Peterson moment, they're getting a lot of good Peterson. shots underneath. Yeah. Jaden to Peyton, and that's going to be a foul, and that's going to go on McKenna. And Peyton is the leading scorer um, for the Wolverines. 12 points a game. She shoots 62% from the field. That's not <laughs> from the line, you know. I thought you were going to say from the field. No, no, Ooh. from the line, we, you know, from the line, she's 56, so you almost want to foul. I mean, you don't, I mean, don't want to pile up the fouls, but um, she's a lot better because she shoots probably most of her shots right from inside the lane there. Carlin gathers in the rebound after the two misses, and Engel took the one dribble and missed Salee. The dribble cost her. It kicks right to Carlin. Carlin leaves it short. Wolverines want to run. Yeah, so, sometimes with a quick shot, you're going to give them multiple possessions, but that's going to be our best opportunity to score tonight. Well, nobody scored here in about a minute of basketball. And there's Peterson, and that's going to be a travel. Yep. Uh, came up and down with it. And, and Peyton's the, uh, the the stronger of the two Petersons for volleyball as of today. <laughs> Peyton? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. She was a first team. Uh, she was the all, all stater. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I know they're both really, really excellent volleyball players, but watching uh, some of it uh, online during state tournament time, it seemed she, uh, she was definitely had a strong year. Carlin gathers in the rebound. She's fouled. Good job by Hudson to stay with that. A Jess foul will go on was, knock. Uh, was our prep to watch this week, the courier. Had a couple, Tate. Yeah, Tate was in there too. So uh, just having a, a really, really good senior year leading the Pirates here. Three subs for the Wolverines. Wally comes back in along with Holmes making her first appearance. And Gonzalez back into the game. Yep, Jess is uh, living around that s just under 70% free throw mark from the line. So hopefully she makes these couple and can bounce up there a little bit. And she's now got uh, she's got four points for the Pirates. 14-6, under two to go. Wolverines with the ball. And that's going to be a bump foul on Sarah, and that'll be her second. Ooh. She looks like and she bumped knee. knee. Yeah, I was going to say, good thing she's got that padding on there too. But, well, uh, she's going to come out of the game with her two fouls, and uh, Heinzerling will replace her. Yeah, I got to – hopefully she's – I think she'll be fine. Just probably needs to – but we need to get her back, get her going on the offensive end too. We've kind of uh, kind of staved off the, the initial run by uh, the Wolverines. Um, 
Good play by McKenna, tipped it away. Heinzerling comes up with it. Good uh, good chance to get a, a bucket here. Work it in. See if we can find Jess there in the in the high post area. Make something happen there. That'll be the important. Right there. Yeah, there you go. 15. Good. 14-8. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, the D and H guards play out high outside the arc, and their post players are right there kind of at that volleyball line. So there's going to be a chance for, for uh, Jess. And so... As long as we can get her the ball, I think we can uh, make some things happen from that area. Gonzalez traveled. She Good tried call. to step back to take three, and then she took a step to, uh, before yep. she put it on the floor. Good defense there by Hudson, just to show there. With that, too, get, get organized here. Handled, there you go. Oh, double dribble. So. Nobody let Jess know that the girl was coming from behind. Jess was trying to get to the hole and had to slow down because the defender was in front of her. Nobody let her know, and she got tipped from behind and then knocked it off. It'll the be line. yeah, it'll be important all night. Whoever is going to be in that, and it's probably going to be mainly Jess tonight that uh, they can handle the ball because they're going to maybe be able to make things happen. Oh, nice! You don't see that pass. very often. Yeah. A girl's pass, a one-hand wow. whip pass clear across right. the baseline, and then that's going to be a foul on. Lampfar, and that will be her second yeah, you team's don't, fifth. Not from baseline, no, from the beyond the <laughs> almost the arc to the arc. Um, um, that doesn't happen. Ninety percent of the girls would have thrown that off the right. uh, off the mat <laughs> right. when they pulled it with <laughs> yeah, one hand. That's right. That's right. Well, Hudson uh, still has the opportunity to attack here. Engel in the middle drives it, and she gets Good. fouled and go to the free throw line. So. The Wolverines have been stuck on 14, and the Pirates just keep clawing away here. And Engel will go to the free throw line to try to cut the six-point deficit with 29 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Done a really nice job of uh, getting the ball to the center, and that's kind of where you know the weakness of any kind of press or any kind of zone is right there in the middle. And when you get it in the middle, you have a, you have a strong player. You can make decisions. You can, uh, you can either score or pass and... Uh, um, so we've done a nice job of that the last about four minutes of game time here. Engel misses both. And I would assume they're going to probably play for, going to run a, a double high here. Pirates are kind of in a 2-3, a but Kylie's up above it. Long jumper, no good, tipped, and uh, they're going to get a shot off here at the end of the quarter. And now they'll have one more crack at it with .4 seconds left to go. It's going to be some sort of tap. They don't have necessarily time to catch and shoot. It's going to be some sort of tap. And it's tipped away by Heinzerling, and that's the end of the first quarter. So the Wolverines started out on a 7-0 run, and the Pirates answer and actually outscored them after that 7-0 run. Yeah, um, did a eight, nice job. 8-7. Yeah, yep, did a really nice job of kind of settling in. And that's what's hard, you know. We, we Everybody knows, you know, everybody that's watched them play, we played them earlier, we know they press. It's just absolutely, it's one of those things. But you can't simulate the length, the quickness, anything like that. And it took, took us... You know, a good minute and a half or two minutes to kind of realize, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we can go ahead and attack it. We played them a month ago, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean you've played eight games since then, and you've seen different different opponents. And and oh yeah, okay, this is what we need to do. I need to use a better ball fake. I I, I need to anticipate a little bit better. So um, hopefully H Hudson can overcome that here in the next. Uh, during the second quarter. And we've had this discussion to start the year. We were like, well, Dyke New Harvard's favorite. They might lose one or two. Then about midseason, we said, I don't know if they're going to lose one. And yeah, that, they, I mean, they, yeah, they had that close game. Uh, the only the closest game they've had is Denver, Denver. here um, a little bit ago. And other than that, that was a six point game. So, but I think we're getting a glimpse on how you can stay with them. Take care of the basketball. Take the ball to the basket. Get them in a little foul trouble. They have 16 fouls. Get the ball to the high post, but she double dribbled. Yeah, and that's. I mean, they're they're probably gonna they're gonna foul just because they're so aggressive. You you don't get 20 steals by keeping the hands in your pocket. You know, you have active hands and you're gonna be aggressive and try to get steals. So. Um, that's going to lead to some fouls. Quali with the long three just lipped off the top end. Jess with the run out here. See if she can get something off of this. Out to Sarah. 
Kelly with a quick shot. <laughs> Rare no good. shot. But that's all right, but yep. I'm sure that's exactly what Coach he Curley said, had, Coach had talked Curley about. Coach said to me is if they do not shoot at the ball when they're wide open, they may come out of the game. Right, <laughs> yeah. Right, and you want to have that aggressive mindset against, a, you know, you're playing the number two team in the state. You can't you can't just be bashful and, and while I hope, you know, no, be aggressive. It's going to go in. Let's, let's shoot the ball. Be ready to shoot. There we go, Madison. Michael for three off the iron. Sarah battles that for that weak side rebound, and it's tipped out of bounds by Gonzalez, and it'll stay with the Pirates. We're doing a really good job of competing here on the boards, getting ourselves second opportunities for, for oh, just well, quick hands there, knocked out of bounds. If I'm not mistaken, our girls lost to Jessup in overtime both times. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Yep. So those are two that the oh so closes. Yep. That and it makes and then, a huge difference. Right. In and, the, and the AP, you know, both goals games were, you know, could have win either way. And I know it's a becomes a little bit, little bit a level of frustration when uh, you can't sometimes break the the uh, get over the hump. That but maybe tonight we can. Uh, we're right, we're right in a position to do that um, here early in the second quarter. So keep fighting and staying competitive here. I think we'll maybe have a chance here. Hanson up top. Over to Michael. Michael into Carlin. Carlin turns, dribbles to Heinzerling, inside to McKenna. McKenna kicks it out. Uh, that was the right idea, yep. but she should have looked one step higher and kicked it to and, Sarah. And there. probably about against anybody else, that pass is probably there. So... Just need to have that quick glance of, uh, hey, this was a nice fake by Jess. Got a little bump. Peterson gets a piece of it. We're still, nobody scored in the last about four minutes of basketball. And there's the lob pass underneath, and it's up in foul good. Peterson on the bucket. Foul on McKenna. Ah, those those two fingers jobbies <laughs> from up here. Yeah, depending on if they're going go two, three, McKenna. yeah. So, um, so yeah, just threw it up over the top. And again, that she's not the she makes it from underneath, but the struggles from the line there. And have a jump ball. This is going to belong to the Wolverines. They still haven't. Well, they didn't. I don't think they did put the foul up there yet. I think it's on McKenna. But yeah, it's not up there because yeah, we have four team fouls, but it's not. Uh, it's quality. quality long three back iron. Michael Cher, uh, gets the rebound quick to Carlin. Carlin goes up, no foul called, and then they save it to Carlin, and now she's going to have another chance at that time. She stopped pump fake good. Yeah, nice job by Jess being aware. Uh, D and H a little bit uh, sloppy with the outlet pass and took advantage of that and just got an easy look. Law pass to knock, and that's out of bounds, and that will belong to the Pirates. You can see what the Wolverines are, are doing a lot now. I think they're just, hey, let's just throw it over the top, get it to our, our, our big post girls, and see what we can uh, see if we can get easy shots. Good press breaker up to Carlin. Carlin steps inside the three-point line off the back iron. No good. Peterson rebounds. Yep, good look there by Sarah. Nushu was double teamed underneath, and... Just just had that uh, just inside the arc look. Good Carlin hands. tipped it away again. She's going to go coast to coast. Up, no foul again. Blocked away by Knock. Here comes the Wolverines. Back down with it. Hoffman gets in the lane to Quali, and she traveled. Or stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Yeah, you can just see that, the you know. Oh, he's oh, going to call offense, a foul. foul. Offensive foul. Peterson on the foul. So, moving oh, screen. Boom. So that'll give him 17 fouls and Peterson's second foul. It's a player control foul, so no shooting free throws. Yeah, that was, I thought he was calling. Oh, right between, the, between the, legs. the legs. So, oh, the Bruce five hole. Gonna yep. Bruce going to take a timeout. Coach Dahl with a 30 second no, full timeout. No, I think it's full timeout, so. Hanging around, 16 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and we've got them, you know, if, as long as we can keep strong handling the ball, they're going to. You know, they're going to continue the foul. We're going to be at the line, and uh, we can keep ourselves um, kind of going with all that stuff uh, kind of going forward here. Um, I don't know. It, those of you that, that, that like high school basketball and, and basketball in Iowa, there's a uh, podcast out there called The Shooter's Touch. Uh, Adam Veet is – you played at UNI, was at AGWR, and his, his guest last week was Bruce. 
And so if you want to kind of know the, the backstory of Bruce, and yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a um, hometown is Dyke, and his, his travels all the way around uh, kind of this area and coaching and, and decided to come back and lead the Wolverine program here a few years ago. So interesting conversation, some theory and things like that. So if you, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, uh, which uh, I always, uh, always like to try to kind of see what's out there, and uh, that was uh, enjoyable. You, uh, you know Bruce and coached against him uh, uh, for a few years, so it's always uh, good to hear people's story and, and how they got to where they're at and to be so successful. Yeah, he's been up in that north, kind of the north, central north, east uh, Iowa area, AGWSR, North Butler Green. and Yep, uh, he said Allison Bristow. Bristow. Yep, yep. Allison Bristow, three by Gonzalez. She's got three threes. She's got 11. The lead is nine. Hansen gets oh. it ripped away. And now Sarah's going to pick up her third. And the bucket's good. I thought there were a couple things. First, I thought there should have been a jump ball there. And then the second thing, after she ripped it away, she took two steps backwards right. before she went forward. Right. Yeah, just good aggressive play um, for that. Just took it right from Sarah. Sarah's going to probably have to check out here. And here's this second, this second run. We had it to, to 16 to 10. And uh, all of a sudden it's five um, with a three free throw coming. And all of a sudden it's uh, now a 12 point game. 22-10, 4.20 left to go in the second quarter. Carlin in there, yeah, Michael Travel. Yep. Just, it, That's uh, not a very good spot to give her the ball. Right, yeah, and surrounded by multiple players. And sometimes it's like, okay, I need to get rid of it. It's like, okay, no one's pressuring me. Let me keep it until someone can I draw the defense before I kind of I uh, kick it off to a teammate. So they're going to skip. It looks like they're pretty good skipping around and driving in. Ball tipped up into the air, and Carlin comes down with it. Here comes Jess. Around the back dribble into the front court. So offensively, you know, they're only averaging giving up 25 points a game, and we're at 10 already, so. This one's going to belong on the jump ball, alternating possession to the Pirates, and here comes Salee getting ready to check into the lineup, replacing Heinzerling. Since Coach Dahl took that timeout here a couple minutes ago there on a six to nothing run. So he must have said, let's uh, let's crank up the defense here a little bit. And uh, they definitely aren't it's caused some, pr the, some problems for the Pirates here. Hoynes into the lineup replacing Peterson. Has Jess been out yet? I don't think she just, has. I think at the end of the first quarter okay. break, just to get that, just get that. last okay. 20 yeah, seconds uh, plus the quarter break. So we need to find a, find a way to get a bucket here. There we go. Carlin out to Michael, and here come the Pirates setting to Carlin. Carlin turns the corner, and she's going to go to the free throw line to shoot one and one. Yep. As this foul is going to be on the Wolverines, it'll be their eighth team foul, and the foul will go on number 45, Hoynes. That's going to be, that's the focal point there for the Pirate offense is to get to that high post area, and, and Jess has been there for the most part. Ellis played a little bit there, but so Jess is going to have her lots of opportunities uh, from that area. Looks like she's locked in there at the line, too. She's got, uh, Jess got eight of the 11 for the Pirates. She'll get her second free throw here. That one is up, and that one's also good. 22-12, halfway through the second. One thing, if you've watched the Pirates play all year, is that we're not pressing them because uh, we really want to get back and get our defense set against their, uh, against their offense. And... Gonzalez is uh, having a game Stolen here. Stolen by Hoffman, and there's another quick bucket. So Gonzalez with the runner, Hoffman with the steal and the layup. And uh, they've made a little bit of adjustment on their press. And now um, thrown away again, and here comes a two-on-one. Did she travel first? Yep. Yep, we're just getting a little bit too much in a hurry back to where we were kind of at the beginning of the game. And so need to settle down to carry the ball. Um, when we get it into the offensive end, we've had some success of finding some holes in there, but a lot of steals, a lot of turnovers by the Wolverines. There's a good pass. Carlin in the middle to Engel. Engel stops, kicks it to Carlin in the middle of the lane. Heinzerling will take the jumper, blocked by Knock. Nope, that's a good play by Callie. She needs to do that, be aggressive, thinking about the shot there. Um, just a little bit of height there, swatted it away. 
Knox runner, good. They're That's really, the they are really good at that wing ball fake and runner right into the heart of the Pirate defense there and causing all kinds of problems. Michael loads up a three. That one's going to be off the front of the iron. No good. Knock on the rebound. 2.30 to go in the second. 28-12 uh, Wolverines. Kicked up to Lamphar. Back to Knock. Knock wants a three. That's going to be off to the left. And My McKenna battles for the board and gathers it in and off to Carlin. Good job by Macy to win that battle. Good strength and aggressive play there to capture the ball there for the Pirates. Carlin at the high post. Heinzerling. Yep. Then off Be ready, to Michael. Madison. Michael wants another three. That might have got a little touch by Hoffman. It left it short, and here comes Knock for the Wolverines. Yep, Colin following what we wanted to do. It just they're, they're getting a hand on no matter how quickly we shoot it, they're getting a hand on about everything. Here come the Wolverines facing this zone. Hoffman spins, gets to the baseline. And then into the middle of the lane. Knock loading up another three. This one's good. Ellery knock for three. Timeout, Coach Curley. Yep, they're just getting into, they're easily from no matter where they're at, they can get right into the, the, the heart of the Pirate defense there in the zone. And it's either setting up dump passes downside to their posts or out to their wing players. And now they've hit a couple threes out there. So, um, yeah, they're... They're playing well. They're doing a lot of things, uh, kind of a lot of the things that we've seen before, and they've done kind of everybody on their schedule. They played last night. They were they went down to Mount Vernon and beat Mount Vernon by 40 points too. So, you know, so they are uh, they are rolling along and uh, no let up tonight. Um, they do have a big game on uh, Tuesday night. They got Grundy Center. That'll yeah, be Grundy ranked, yeah. Grundy's rated ninth. They moved up a little bit. Denver fell back down a yep. little bit. I think so, we got Mac Valley at one. Yep, Mac. And then, you know, I went to, uh, so last year we were in the same regional as Mac right. Valley and, and Denver and AP and us. So AP and Den uh, Hudson were playing here, and I had said something to Coach Curley. I was like, I'll go scout. You, I want to I wanna, I wanna help you out. And so I went and scouted, and Denver went over there and beat Mac Valley, and you know, you know, they're rated number one, but, man, I don't know. DNA looks really good. <laughs> Carlin takes the middle lane. A blocking foul called on Hoynes. That'll be her third. And Jess will go to the free throw line. It's still one and one. They say she was on the floor. Yep. Before the shot, so it's one and one. So, good, uh, good move by Jess. She's living at the line. And then I think uh, West Branch is three, and West Branch was number one at the beginning of the year. They've got one loss right. in the Northlands. So right. top four from this side of the state. state. Yep. Split those four up if the ratings continue to go that direction. we got to find a little more offense, though. Jess is carrying it with the 11 of the 14. It's 31. Right, yeah, 14. we need to. Uh, and obviously Sarah's settled with some foul trouble, and Madison just hasn't. Been able to hit that first shot yet. So good Ball good hands the there. Oh, so we have a clear out, I think. Uh, they're scrambling for the ball. Correct. And yep. so that foul is going to go on knock. It'll be her second, and it's the 10th team foul on the Wolverines. So it'll send Ingle to the line to shoot two the rest of the way. There's a minute and 13 left in the half. Yeah, so Hudson's now, you know, they made their... Made their run, it was 16-10, and Hudson's getting opportunities like we talked about at the line here to, to kind of stay somewhat within range if you can get a big run going. Ella 0 for 4 from the free throw line, leaving points on the board there. And here come the Wolverines with a 17-point lead. Lamp fire tipped away. Hoffman, nice jump pass and knock. It looked like she got hammered. And now I'm, yeah, I was gonna say, are they gonna see the tip? Look, like, look like knock just absolutely got hammered on that one. Right, because Macy, Macy, what? She brought her hand back, yeah. and and that's usually, that's usually an automatic foul, whether you get all ball or not. Usually, most most officials will, that's a foul. Um, with that too. 
That's one of the drills that we teach in volleyball. The swing. The swing, yeah. <laughs> she did a good job. <laughs> she did a good and job. We need to uh, touch that, yeah. We need to touch that, yeah. Yeah, because if we don't touch it, they're going to get, she's going to get, um, uh, Lanfear is going to get that easy breakout layup. So good job by Madison to touch it so we can set up our defense here to make things a little bit more difficult for them. We need to get. Salee into the lineup replacing Engel. Yeah. We're approaching 30 seconds to go in the half. Hoffman jumps in the air and gets it slapped away. And now Heinzerling comes up with it to Carlin. Carlin's dribble's dead and gets it off to Heinzerling. Here come the. Pirates trailing by 17. Carlin, the 15 foot line, takes it in. Scoop shot, no good. Bounces off the bottom of the backboard, taken in by Lampfar. Good job by Hudson. That's still a pretty good shot against that defense. Um, trouble is, Jess is a lot of times in there against some um, girls 5 foot 10, 5 foot 11, 6 foot. That uh, makes it hard to get that shot. Can we send Hoffman's jumper? No good. Can we send Coach Kerbucket oh. up and good by Gonzalez? And <laughs> Can we send Coach Curley what we're seeing up here, though? Jess, all she has to do is turn around. She, right, yeah, yeah. She's trying to take right. it into the tall right. traffic, and right. they're not calling much. Therefore, I mean, they, they called 10 team fouls, but not around the basket. Right, no. Um, so and they're so just, good. They yeah. are so good at, at blocking. That's the, I mean, um, they're, they're blocking without fouling be, just because they're, you know, between 5'9 and 6 foot. They can, you know. Most of our girls aren't that size, so anytime we release the ball, the ball's out of their hand and it's getting, it's getting blocked without fouling. So I'm gonna say 25 to 30 touches yeah. on defense, yeah. either by by the pass or a block shot, right. tip ball on the on the shot. So we're we've reached the half. It's 33 to 14. Wolverines on top. They're right, eh, right on pace to about their their defensive average. They give up 25, and the Pirates got 14. Gonzalez has 15 to lead the Wolverines, and Hoffman has seven. Carlin has 11 of the 14 for the Pirates. No real foul troubles. Uh, Sarah had has three, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and and so she her, she was kind of limited uh, with uh, her play and, and everything like that. So and here's Coach Gerling, and we can talk about a win. Well, since we've last talked and a little bit other stuff, so. Yeah, so uh, I'll walk, we'll walk him in. Coach uh, Baird will take off his headset. We'll work in, walk in, uh, walk him in. Uh, head coach Derek Gerling and uh, check in with the Pirate Boys here before uh, their matchup with the number two team in the state. Even though it's probably not number two because they got beat after the rankings came out <laughs> right away. But uh, first of all, let's go back to Monday night. Congratulations, got that, got a nice win over at Jessup. Why don't you kind of uh, review for uh, for the audience so. Yeah. What happened there? Yeah, it's kind of a, a monkey off our back, isn't it? Right. A long time coming. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're just starting to click a little bit. I mean, we had scored about 20 more than our average in our last two games, and it's mostly just because our our flow offensively um, is just way better. Uh, we're, we have timely cuts. We have timely ball screens, and, and everything's just kind of smoother right now. And so, yeah, so you got off to a, bit, a good lead over there on, on Monday night. They kind of evened it up at the end of the third quarter. Yep. They kind of went ahead a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the third quarter, and then you p just played really, really well that fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, went on a huge run. Um, and, again, it was just offense. Uh, just really tough to be stopped when you have five guys moving all the time. And, yeah, defensively, I mean, we – did what we needed to do. We were pretty solid that night. So, with the exception of that, the freshman Miller kid hitting a couple thirty right. footers. I mean, <laughs> it was probably a right. Yeah, handling. Yeah, it was. There. I mean, it was. It was really. It was fun to watch. It yeah. was fun to watch uh, um, on Monday night. And then you get to go hop on the bus right away on Tuesday night and yeah. and and go play AP, who's rated in the in the top ten of the state, and they kind of kind of jumped you right away on Tuesday night. Man, they shot it well. Um, but I mean. Kind of the same positives of that. Our offense looked really good, and that's that's a team that just speeds you up and gets up in you all the time. And to play against that for four quarters can be exhausting. And we still put up sixty against them. And you know, if they didn't shoot probably eighty percent from three in the first half, it right. might have been a different story. Yeah, but yeah. part of that's on us, definitely yep. defensively. But man, yeah, they shot the ball really well. Yeah, and with you having played the night before, sometimes you don't have that the juice in the legs to 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 get into them, which you really need to yeah. to kind of shut them down. 
um, a little bit. Um, we'll get into tonight's game with uh, with DNH, and you're playing you're playing four games in five days here. Yeah, you yeah. know. But uh, um, the 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 news this afternoon. Yeah, we're all looking at this. Okay, the the. The way the state does is they released, uh, you know, districts, and we got our district assignment. So I'll just kind of read through the teams and, and then your initial reaction on, on kind of how this is and then what the process is uh, before we start state tournament play. So Dyke, New Hartford, this is District 13, so it's the 2A district. Where Dyke, New Hartford, East Marshall, us, Iowa Falls, South Harden, and West Marshall. So your initial thoughts on, on, on that grouping of teams yeah, we're really happy about it. I mean, I, we couldn't be more confident going into it. Uh, if, I mean, everyone looks at it on paper, and we are we were probably the best one win team, you know, ever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, <laughs> we we feel really good about the strides that we're taking right now, and it's shown in the last few games. And uh, we we strongly feel that we can beat anybody in that district, and so uh, we feel good about it. We don't really care what seed we are. Uh, we got to start winning some games here to to kind of help our case with with the seating but right so uh, how what kind of kind of walk the the uh the public through this process here they, they came out this afternoon yeah the, and then what what's what's next and and how does this all work out then so yep we you know we have a few games until and then we have a meeting with all the coaches within our district and kind of get together and we kind of just per, persuade the other coaches or argue why we deserve what seed we do and so there's six teams in the district and each one kind of argues for which seed they believe they are, and then we just take a vote. And so um, that's kind of the idea of it. And so Dyke's probably going to have a really strong case for the one seed just because of their record right now. But uh, knocking them off tonight would be a, a huge step in proving our point for a, a higher seed than. Right. So the first, because it's a six team district, the yep. seeds one and two get a bye. Correct. And then so the other four teams play, and then you feed into that. So, you know, it might work out that the next time you would seed. Dyke New Hartford would be in a district final. You yeah, know, I mean, if yeah. you get if you get bracketed, kind of off that side. So yeah, I mean, we're going basically going west, kind of like similarly to what we did last year. Yep. Um, one thing that I noticed too is I look and, and you avoided the conference tournament, which is in District Six. Yeah, I saw that too. You know, there's yeah. um, in that district there's four of the six uh, conference teams in that district, so you avoid that. Um, and that 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 the kind of the strong team in that district is Denver. Yep. The state did. A, I mean, you know, I try to be as unbiased as possible, but I think they did a pretty good job for our conference of splitting up. We have four teams tied for first place. I think so. W- too. Wapsie is in one A, so they're not a factor yep. in two A. But they split up the district, so AP's in the district, Denver's in the district, Dyke and Hartford's in the district. Yep. So they're going to all have an opportunity. To get to a sub-state final, maybe yep. get a chance to get the state tournament. So I was I was happy for our conference to yeah. see that, yep. and that we avoid playing everybody that we play yeah. multiple times yeah. <laughs> along the way. So that will be uh, that will kind of pair itself out, and probably believe by the next time uh, we talk to you in a couple weeks, uh, we'll have a better idea of who we're playing, when, and where, and all that stuff then too. So. Um, let's talk about uh, your opponent here tonight, the uh, the Wolverine from Dyke New Hartford, obviously. Um, uh, last week, or it was probably about ten days ago, their 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 uh, best player, their leading scorer, yep. Yep. probably maybe maybe player of the year within the conference, Dane Correct. Fuller, yep. had broke his hand, um, and so they've had a couple games. They the, the the next night or the day or two after, they turned around and they beat Denver, who's yep. rated in the top ten in the state. Then on earlier this week, they got beat by Wapsie Valley, yeah. in, which is. Top 10 in yeah, 1A, right, um, yep. and then they turned around, and then they beat Sumner Fred. So you've got an opportunity to maybe watch them two or three times without Fuller. What, any, any changes, anything that you've noticed, or um, what are you expecting tonight from uh, Coach Moore and his crew tonight? Yeah, they just – it's – with uh, Fuller being gone, it's, it's less of a three-point threat type of team. I mean, he could just shoot it. If you weren't there, he, he's shooting it, and it's probably going in uh, from anywhere. And they have Waters, who, who shoots it really well. Uh, so we have to identify him at all times and, and keep him away from getting open threes. But they just relentlessly attack the rim, and they're really, really good at it. Uh, and they just drive, kick, drive, kick, drive, kick until they get a really open, good shot. And, again, they're really good at it. So I, I expect them to do that. It's just kind of freelance basketball, and uh, they do it really well. So we just got to be uh, really solid on defense tonight. One couple things that – and I watched their Sumner-Fred game, thanks mm-hmm. to you on Huddle um, – <laughs> 
Um, some things that, that I, I noted then, too, is, yeah, everyone can drive. Yep. Their spacing is Very outstanding. Good. You know, and that's a reflection on Coach Moore and, and what he's done for years. They always have really good spacing. There is no kind of – they do run some sets. Yep, yep. Um, and, and, and so they do that, too. The, the stat that jumped out to me, they shoot over 50% from the field. Oh, yeah. How, what high school – Team good. shoot. I mean, whether whether you're an inside team or not an inside team, if you shoot over fifty percent for, and we are we're twelve, thirteen games into the season, yeah, already they're they're doing that. So yeah, yeah they you got know. a couple guys that might have more free throw attempts than we do on the season <laughs> yeah. as a team. So yeah, yeah. So they're re- yeah, that, they're really aggressive um, um, for that too. Offensively, what do you, what are you expecting them to do against you defensively tonight? Um. For their they're on defense. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah so well, they're on defense. I think yeah. they'll they do kind of a run and jump type of man where they'll come trappy and rotate out of it, and it's super aggressive and it speeds people up. And also expect them to do a two three look a little bit, but again, really aggressive and trapping out of it. So uh, a lot of aggressive defense, just like they are offensively. Yep. I the the one thing I would tell you is tell your boys to set good screens because you're going to get open. So yep. All right, all right. Have a good luck tonight, yeah, coach. Thank you. We're looking forward good to, to, to a, you. A, a good game and. And it's nice to catch him to, up with him and get his thoughts on the district pairings, which came out. The girls, uh, we expect uh, um, uh, it's not this week, but the following week, the first week in February. So hopefully they come out fairly early. And it could be where we're paired up here with, uh, with DNH. Coach Gerling at halftime, and we'll talk a little bit about the boys' game when we get to that. We're ready for second half action. Wolverines 33, Pirates. 14 back screen, Hoffman long jumper off front of rim, no, rebound knock, spins, shot up, no good, good position by Engel, foul on Peterson. Yeah, that's her third, good position there, yep, you know, Coach Dahl, they they ran a set play right away here at the uh, beginning of the uh, third quarter, got the shot that they wanted, but didn't, didn't execute, we need someone in the middle there. Looks like they've switched up their full court press to a 1-3-1 one, one, and then probably dropped back to that. Hansen takes it right into the teeth of the defense. It's blocked away and then actually not blocked away. And it'll go off a Hansen out of bounds turnover to the Wolverines. That's uh, one thing uh, when I coached against Bruce 10 years ago, it was 1-3-1, one, 1-3-1. Three, one, one, three, one. Yep. He did a lot of 1-3-1 one, one, and, you know, over at uh, AGWSR they had lots of good size they could really spread out and really cause you some problems if you got the ball in the corners. Takeaway by Carlin. Minute into the second half, nobody scored this half. Engel, Carlin, high post. That's where I told her she needs to turn and just look at the basket. Yep, she's she's, she's looking to set people yeah. up. And, or if she just turns and face, Peterson's going to come up right. and then Macy's going to be open underneath for a bounce pass in an easy shot. So. Um, now they get it into McKenna to Carlin. Carlin gets to a right hand. Yep. She's there fouled. Is she going to be on Kuali or Gonzalo? Maybe on Gonzalo. Yep, it's on Kuali. Going to be on Kuali. Yep. It will be her first. But Carlin will go to the free throw line where she's lived there tonight. Yep. Eight for eight. And she's got 11 of the 14. First free throw up. And this oh, one rims okay. no. Yep, that's the announcer's jinx that they talk about. So. Yeah, and we'll blame it on the <laughs> halftime break, the cooling off period. Right, yeah. I, don't know. I didn't watch her warm up. I don't know if she came out and shot free throws or not. Second yeah, one's good. good. Yeah. 18-point lead for the Wolverines. Hoffman facing this 2-3 zone. A Knock team. all the way across yep. the Kuali. Just maybe even back up even further. Make them shoot it from the outside. Yeah, they're going to hit. they're going to hit some, but... Really make them force it inside. Maybe we can get a few turnovers. So don't necessarily always need to come out and be that aggressive on their shooters. Peterson inside, blocked away by McKenna. And taken down, and here comes Michael. That's one, the official has been pretty consistent about letting, letting the girls try to block shots underneath. If they feel it's clean, they're, they're not blowing the whistle. They're not anticipating the foul. That's always good. Michael loads up for three, in and out, no good. Bounced around, and that's going to stay with the Pirates as Gonzalez tipped it out of bounds. 6.06 left to go in the third quarter, and the Wolverines have not scored this half. It's 33-15. Yeah, that uh, first half, was our, they already had seven up on the board. So Tipped away by Hoffman, taken by Koali. Yeah, got to come meet every pass there. Jess was just, just a little bit slow and trying to come and jump and get that ball, and Taylor tipped it away. Yep. 
one-handed passes. Yeah. Well, that one didn't look like much compared to what we've seen, but uh, McKenna gets her. Yeah, the bump. Oh, he, no. okay, he got her hitting around the head. I thought maybe it was a bump underneath, but. Uh, so Peterson yeah. gets her sixth point of the night, and she'll go to try to make it seven, 20-point lead for the Wolverines. And the free throw is on its way. It's up, and this one's good. That one, that one was purely in. She had struggled so far tonight from the line. Well, oh, need to come meet the ball there. There we go. Michael breaks the pressure to Heinzerling. Bounce pass to McKenna, back out to Michael, and then in the lane to Callie. Callie could have <laughs> taken that yeah, shot. Yeah, I think that Coach Curley is like, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. Heinzerling to the high post to Carlin, back out to Hanson. Hanson pump fakes, swings it around. The Pirates being a little patient here. Into Carlin. Carlin gets there to her go, left, left hand. Left. Scoop shot with yep. the right hand. Just... Uh, unstoppable from that point in the floor. She can go left or she can go right. Even though she went left, she shot with her right hand. Lob pass, tipped away right to knock. And it rims in. Well defended by the Pirates, but it was tipped right to knock from three feet away. Yeah, and she uh, had a nice soft touch, put it up and in. You had, had about three Pirates jumping for that ball, and that left, uh, left the ball loose there for knock to, to pick it up. Shoot that, Jess. Yeah, there's the 15-footer <laughs> passed up by Carlin Heinzerling and stolen by Koali. And now the pass to Hoffman. Hoffman takes it right at Sarah, who has three in and out. No good. Sarah claims the rebound. Good defense there, you know. She just uh, shot it a little bit too firm. Oh, ooh, Sarah got bumped on the head too there. Koali's layup up and good. And it's a 40-17 to game. Ooh. Yeah, when Sarah, Sarah's, uh, they need to call a timeout. They need to get Sarah, Sarah yeah. off the floor there. She needs to be looked at. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a concussion, but she's. Uh, An offensive foul on Gonzalez, and we need to take a yeah, look at Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. She got up, and her legs were wobbly, and yeah. here she comes out yeah. of the game. So the trainer she needs to, to look at her, yep. So. Yep, here comes Kinsey, going to take a look at her. Yeah. It'll just be a bump on the head, but still, she. Uh, wasn't Patrick Mahomes, but but still, she uh, you could tell that she was uh, she got uh, knocked on the head. The one thing that you can't do in the half court offense, and then this yeah, a couple steps by McKenna that Sarah got in trouble with is when you try to spin on the wing extended area. They run that yep. they run the girl right at you and spin right into right. it, and that's what kind of happened. And then Sarah fell and hit her head on the gym floor, and so we'll see what. The trainer finds out. Gonzalez for three. Up no good. Battle for the rebound. Peterson comes up with it. Layup good. Give yeah, we're, nine. we've done we did a good job on the on the ball side of, of blocking out knock, but uh, since there's they have two strong post players, leave the backside open and took advantage of that for the easy bucket. I'll tell you that Paula Gonzalez, I've seen her make skip passes, one-handed passes, yep. bounce passes across the baseline, and that's that's one strong pass yes. she's got. Michael will be way off to the right, and it's gathered in by Lampfire. And then Heinzerling's going to commit the foul. So that'll be the second team foul on the Pirates this half. Heinzerling gets her first. Salee into the lineup to play, replace McKenna. So now it's small ball for yeah, the yep. Pirates. Yeah, yeah. Kylie wanted to play up front, and Kelly's like, no, <laughs> you're, you're in the center. <laughs> you're in the center of that. So do the best that you can. Then they're just jump high, Kylie. Uh, they're, they're just going to throw it over the top. Yeah. Peterson in the double figures with 11. 44-17, yeah. three minutes left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Curley wishes he had yep, uh, had a, had another big post girl to put in there, but he's going to get a timeout here. 44-17. Wolverines on top, led by... Gonzalez has 15, Peterson 11, and it's been all Jess Carlin for the Pirates as she's got 14 of the 17 points. Yeah, it's Macy's got a bucket. Who's got the Who's got the one free throw? I can't remember <laughs> the top of my head. It's not up on the board, so it's not someone that's in the game. So, um, so yeah, it's been. Uh, other than Jess, she's getting, been able to get to that free throw line and uh, uh, free throw lane, and then get foul and get to the line to uh, to lead the Pirates. Other than that, you can just see how what makes 
DNH such a strong team with their defense. Just their size and their uh, anticipation. Um, now, keep in mind that the Wolverines lost 2,000 point scores. Yes. That went on to play at Wisconsin Green Bay and. I don't know where the other one went. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, Ellery's older sister, Knock, and their point guard. Yeah, they, yeah. So Division One, and I know I think uh, went to Knock went to Division Two. So I mean, yeah, they lost a lot, but uh, replace it with some good younger players and build on the, the the group that was already playing basketball, and they're good to go. Ooh. Mm, nah, I don't know about that one. It'd be a foul that caused her to walk, but. Okay. All right. Well, she didn't have con. You can't. You can't travel if you don't have control of it, too. But turnover for the Pirates and the Wolverines will go back to work. There Ella jumps up, grabs it. And now we've got scramble. Hoffman, nice scoop pass to knock. Knock layups, good. And the one thing that you're seeing from Hudson is that doing a really good job on the ball, but the backside. Everybody, we're having to have put three or four girls to to control the back, the front side and the back side for second shots or for passes is wide open and um, they're really taking advantage of that tonight. Hones and Koali come in and into the lineup for the first time tonight is Bixby and McKenna will come back in with Sarah Hansen reporting back good. in so she might, must have got a good diagnosis from Kenzie. And we have 2.06 left to go in the third quarter. The lead is 29-46-17, Wolverines. It's in, yeah, it needs to, uh, yep, there we go. Hey, Border. It's there. We're, you know, now she'll shoot it two more times and miss, but at least she made that one, so. Give her 16, 16. of the 19 for Jess. Right, yeah, so the, the next thing would be is if they start to collapse, which I'm surprised they really haven't come up and really taken her away. Um, it's for her then, hey, now let's pass to the wings, and, and our wing, wing players should be open for some shots. But they're content with letting her just kind of work her way from the, that high post area. Well, and they could be under the philosophy of let Jess get her 20, we'll shut everybody else right. down, and that's pretty much that's, what's happened. Yep. Yep. Macy's got that one bucket. and We still don't know who that, who that Who's got that ball. one free throw out there? No, 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 Jess has 17. I think they've updated yep. it. Jess yep. has 17, yep. Macy's got two. So. Yep. Carlin yeah. working on a double double. I bet you she's got it by now. Yeah, she's uh, she's nine from ten from the line, so I've got the the four buckets then. So, so we'll see if we can get other people on the line. There we go. Good movement there. Swing it, Kylie, dribble drive, kicks it up top to Hanson. A minute left to go in the third quarter. That's not really Kylie's shot, but she gets it off the iron, oh. and then Ella loses it out of bounds too. The Wolverines in here into the game come for the first time. Cubs Abby Son replacing Jaden. Good, good position there. Just uh, just didn't able to grab control of it there. Um, retain that offensive rebound. Lampfire to Hones and then tipped away by Carlin. Yeah, most teams try to run that high low there. Just going to get a runner here. There we go. Just coast to coast. Give her 19, it's 46-21. Playing so hard, doing everything she possibly can to keep the Pirates uh, going here tonight. In the zone on the baseline, over to Bixby. Bixby's jumper on the way, in, out, in, good. Yep, got a little bit overcommitted there on the front side there and left the backside Bixby open for that jumper. 10 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Engel into the front court. Skips it up top to Hansen to Engel. Three seconds left to go, and it's tipped away, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. And we have played three quarters, and it's the number two ranked Dyke New Hartford Wolverines 48 and the Hudson Pirates 21. Carlin has 19 for the Pirates. Yeah, Hudson, it was uh, just had seven points. We're kind of on that seven point run here um, per quarter, and, and Dyke had. Uh, DNH had uh, 15 points that quarter. So they came out. They were not going to let up at all here in the second half. And they came out and uh, we were, for a couple minutes there, for about the first two, two and a half minutes, there wasn't a whole lot of action going on. And then uh, 
they really got going here on the offensive end. Not so much with the press, but their execution on the offensive end, either throwing it over the top, hitting the backside girl, hitting a couple outside shots. Looks like um, he's going to put in his starters here for a few minutes. Hudson will counter with everybody, but Kylie. Uh, Madison's uh, on the bench here. Looks like they're going to match up. So Hudson's getting an opportunity to run their their man-to-man -man offense here, which is good. This is good, uh, and I'm sure Coach Dahl knows he's going to have to play some man-to-man -man at some point along the tournament trail and hitting, seeing some different looks against man. That's going to be good. Uh, reminder, Engel takes it to the basket, and then it's a double dribble. Um, reminder here at the end of the game, Coach Christopher is going to read a script, and we're going to take a moment of silence for Jan Urbanic, who uh, passed away. Uh, I think, believe, from COVID complications. Um, last week, was it? I, I, yeah, I about 10 days ago, 10 yeah. 10 yeah. days ago, yeah. uh, who had an influence on both pro, uh, both districts. towns, yep. districts. Um, so Coach Christopher will read um, what they're going to read, um, but we'll let you hear it from Coach Christopher and take a moment of silence in between games, right as soon as the girls' game's over. So here we go, 7.30 left to go in the basketball game. Salik comes up with a steal. Gonzalez trying to get it back. Ball on the way, left short. Engel tries oh. to battle, knock, knock, tips it away. Koali in the middle of the lane, kicks it out to Hoffman. Hoffman gets into the middle of the lane. Dump oh, pass, wow. beautifully done. Wow. Really nice job there. And she probably could have shot the runner that she's been. She, that a lot of those girls can do, but she decided to pass it off to a teammate and set her up pretty easily here, and it's up to a 29-point lead. The Wolverines have reached 50. Engel takes it to the basket, gets it blocked away, but there's Ooh. a foul, and that's going to go on knock. It'll be her third, team's fourth for the Wolverines. We have Gonzalez with 15 and Peterson with 13, and the reason why I mention that is because I don't believe we will see them for very much longer in this game, and then they'll take them off the board. As Coach Christopher and I have always said, we are not very good at multitasking, so we rely on the board right. that you see. Or I guess you only see the – you don't see the side panels – but we rely on that for our fouls and our points. So uh, free yeah. throw in Ella, and out. Ella's no struggling from the line tonight. She's had opportunity to get three or four points up there for her and, and then been able to execute. Skip across to Koali. Koali's long three. That's going to be hard off the back of the iron. Knock with good rebounding position. Just kind of muscles, muscles angle out of the way and then muscles it up there, which I thought she had no chance of doing and almost got it to go. Yeah, we really, I mean, you know, Macy can match up with one of one of those girls, but uh, between Gonzalez and Nock, um, we just don't have the size that they do. Um, Macy can, can match up with Peterson size-wise, but, uh, but uh, it definitely becomes a change, and that's really been a problem here the second half is that backside, um, them crashing and getting offensive rebounds. Good job by Madison there. Michael with the rebound. Mm. And there's going to be the fourth, fourth on five. knock. Mm. Nope. Yep. So. So uh, a little, discussion little conversation there about uh, why that fall was called. Knock picked up her fourth pretty irrelevant by now but right it's just you know you, you did you know as a whoops, Michael long three. looking to get on the board off the back of the iron no good Hoffman rebounds I'm gonna give a little blurb there's one player out there on the floor for Dyke Noir for that I think would love to get back to the state tournament that's the girl that just passed the basketball because if I am not mistaken and I have been before but I'm pretty sure that she missed Either the front end of a one and a one or missed two free throws against North Polk in the semifinals in the last 10 seconds yeah. down by one. Yep, yep, and I'm sure she, she's she been motivated. She's been a strong player for her whole time. And um, she's looked really good tonight. Right. She handles the ball well, gets into the teeth of the defense. Look at that no-look pass, layup good. Nicely done by Hoffman. Yeah. Just, yeah, she's a playmaker. Not necessarily a score, but she does a lot of the, the things that you need um, to they, help her team be successful. They have her up on the zone where she gets her hands on a lot of balls. So Yeah, her, her, her and go. Taylor are very active up there at the top of the zone. Jump shot. Hoffman leaves it short. 
Hansen with the rebound. Yeah, they're going to match up here. Hudson getting some good uh, opportunities here against their man. Good back cut. Oh, just good quick hands there. By Hoffman. And she comes up with steel. Now she's going to walk it up the floor with 5.13 left to go in the basketball game. 52-21 Wolverines. You know, trying to, don't want to get it above 35, then that clock continues to run. and Tipped away, Michael trying to get on Ooh, the nice scoreboard. Spin. And Carlin up and good, and she's fouled. <laughs> Jess on the weak side, gets her 21st point of the night and will go to the free throw line. The foul is on. 25. Peterson, it's Peterson, her, her fourth, fourth and she's gonna come out. out. Yep. Quali, Peterson, Gonzalez out. Lampfire, Hones, Sohn in. Carlin's free throw Ooh. left it short. Yep, it's a little bit short on that one. She's got to be getting a little bit tired tonight. A little bit tired tonight. She's had her hands on the ball quite a bit and been bumped quite often. And uh, on the defensive end, just rebounding the heck out of the backside there. Knock off the back of the iron. No good. Hansen up for the rebound. Nice job by Sarah to jump up there and uh, capture that. Carlin on the left wing. Gets into the middle of the defense. The runner, no good. Rebound knock. Yeah, it got pushed out just a little bit further than her normal area there. She was outside the lane and uh, dif difficult shot from that area. Pass a little too hot to handle for Sohn, and it'll go out of bounds. Turnover belongs to the Pirates. 4.13 left to go in the fourth quarter. Hansen running the point, bringing it up the floor here. Really looking to get some good ball movement here, see if we can get an easy shot um, off the man offense here. Ooh. Hoffman goes down. Michael leaves it short. She had a rough night. And now the Wolverines will walk it up the court. And I think with that fall by Hoffman will have Coach Dahl getting her out of the game rather quickly here. Yeah. She's uh, obviously got, with her shoulder being taped up a little bit, you don't want to get her either, even further injured if she's fighting something already. Oh, Carlin to the oh. basket. It's tipped away. And here come the Wolverines. Yep, just got to her and spot, and Coach Dahl is going to take a timeout here for a 30, get some subs in. So Looks like Jaden Peterson will enter the lineup along with number 31 for the first time, Whitney Waters. And we have a timeout on the floor by Coach Dahl, 52-23. Got a boys game coming up, and I know you talked to uh, Coach Gerling at halftime. The Wolverines come in here with a very solid record, but they are playing without their leading scorer and um, playmaker, Dane Fuller, and the Pirates gaining a little bit of momentum on a Monday, going over to Jessup and getting a win, then they turned around and had to play AP, who was red hot. Right, yeah, right from the beginning. But, I mean, we noticed this in the Wapsie game that the boys are playing, playing, playing well. I mean, they're they're playing in a, a, a position where they they're going to they're going to give DNH a, a run tonight, and we'll we'll see if it's enough. Bucket up and no good by Jaden Peterson, ripped down by McKenna. She throws it up ahead to Engel. Engel up the right side here, takes it into the teeth of the defense. Underhand scoop shot, good. There we go. There we Engel. Well, a uh, bucket there tonight. Nice, nice running shot. A little bit of uh, what we've seen from the Wolverines quite a bit tonight. Wolverines with under three to go. Peterson up top to Lampfar. So the girls are back in action next on Monday night. They play Monday, Tuesday, Monday over at AGWSR. Um, and They've then, kind of been in and out of the rankings in yep, Class 1A. Class 1A, and then um, then uh, Columbus, then to Union next week. So the girls have have three games. The boys, um, I think, and then we'll maybe mention this a little bit later too, is that the boys, you know, like the girls we played uh, – we played New Hampton as part of kind of that crossover thing. The boys are playing South Wind, and it was supposed to be at Upper Iowa, so but it's um, they've switched it to Wapsie. They're going to play wa up at Wapsie Valley at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon against South Wind, who last night got beat by Sumner Fred. So, so it should be uh, some common opponents to give some boys some some opportunities there to kind of see what they can do. 
Madison just kind of hit that three-quarter of the season slump right now. I guess if there's a good time to go in it, it's now and get rid of it and come tournament time. But she's held scoreless tonight. And jumper by Holmes is good. Yep, just not able to uh, find Nurse Sarah. Oh, got a piece of that. Tip ball yep. by Bixby. Yeah, they seem to get their hands on a lot of things, whether it's a, a, a pass or a shot. They get their hands on a lot of different things and makes it hard. Makes it hard for you offensively to find a rhythm because, uh, because they're, everything seemed to be deflected. Addie Sohn, number five into the lineup for the Wolverines with under two to go. 54-25 Wolverines. Salee, Hanson playing catch. Salee will try the long three, misses everything. Carlin tried to get her hand on it, and it's tipped to Sohn. I think we're getting down to maybe the last, last Wolverine. Taya Curtis getting ready to come in, and then we've got two Pirates ready to come in. Hanson with the rebound. Gaskell and Heinzerling will come into the game the next dead ball. If we can get uh, someone else uh, in the scorebook here tonight. Oh, McKenna gets it tipped away that. by Holmes. There are, uh, there's, still, uh, there's still plenty of uh, games going on tomorrow night, too. Uh, Rundy Center actually goes to Jessup to play the Jessup, girl, Jessup girls and boys. Union's down at Benton Community. That's who they're going to be in action with. And then tonight I'm going to be – I'm going to – between games, I'm going to check the score. Uh, the, the Cedar Falls West score won't be there. <laughs> they, they, I, I want to see who uh, who comes out on top uh, tonight uh, in uh, in Waterloo. So that will be interesting to follow on the girls' side, two highly some of the top teams in the state playing right here in the metro area. West got them in overtime the first time at Cedar, Cedar Falls. Falls. This yep. one will be at West. Yep, and, and I heard a little bit of uh, Dr. Pappas on yep. uh, 1650 50. and, uh, you know, you no, know, West has won, won 10 in a row, but uh, CF's playing really well. Playing really well, so. We got uh, Elise Trunk. Trunk and it's Peyton uh, Stewart in the lineup. Yep. Mackenzie Stewart, and we're under a minute to go. 54-25, Wolverines in control, as good. they have been from the opening tip with a 7-0 run in the first minute. So if we can uh, pass it around here, get an, an easy shot. Hines are laying, playing catch with Mackenzie Stewart, and then we swing it to Salis. Lee gets go. in the middle of the defense and gets ran into. Oh. But we have a foul, and let's see if they're going to call it on the shot or on the floor. I'm going to shoot a one and one. So Carly's going to get to the line here. Carly's uh, three for seven from the line. See if she can uh, make a couple here and get above 50%. At the varsity level, anyways. Free throw up, good. good. Again, here and right after this game's over, we'll have a little uh, reading from Coach Christopher and a moment of silence for Jan Urbanic, and then we will reset and get ready for the boys' game. Kylie off the back of the iron, no good. Sohn flips it up and then ahead, and they look for a three. It's up, short, no good. Abby Sohn with the rebound, swings it to Addy Sohn, and then inside, and foul on Elise Trunk. And that'll be two shots coming for Taya Curtis. Yep, Elise just needs to try to get around on her. Don't let her get the ball in there. Once you, especially that deep into the lane, if you play behind, you're going to be in trouble and more than likely get called for a foul, and that's what happened there. Curtis's free throw is up and good into the lineup. Emma Swanson will replace Kylie Slee for the Pirates. I think that's Taya's first uh, varsity free throws, so she's going to get herself in the book for that. Here comes Annabelle Lang in for Heinzerling. Offensive rebound and kick out. We're on 10 seconds left to go in the basketball game. 55-26 Wolverines. And I think unless somebody takes a wild shot here at the end, that's going to be your final score. The Wolverines will stay undefeated, the number two ranked team in Class 2A with a 55-26 win over the Hudson Pirates. And Coach Curley will re regroup and get ready for 
action on Monday. And we will have this moment of silence right now. I'll try to read it. I don't know what the best thing to do. You should, would, well, should we just pull it down and let them read it? Yeah, here. Tribute to Jan Urbanik, who her and her family have had uh, impact on both Dyke New Hartford and Hudson School Districts. As the girl, girls game has been completed, and we will cut the feed, and we will be back in about 10 minutes for boys action. We'll see you in about 10.